Our friend Tucker Carlson finally answers the big question, would he accept the nomination for vice president? And he savagely roasts Nikki Haley. Welcome back to the JP Rax channel, my beautiful freedom loving friend, where we like to call out the lies, hypocrisy, and corruption of tyrants, shine the light of awareness on woke absurdities, and highlight the amazing work of other freedom fighters, to which Tucker Carlson qualifies for, in my opinion. Now, we've all heard the murmurings for the past few weeks. We heard Melania Trump say, hey, I want Tucker Carlson as Trump's VP nominee running mate. But would Tucker Carlson accept it? We've speculated, maybe he will, maybe he won't. The answer's in, he was asked directly and he answers the question directly. If you take a look at here, Benny Johnson's Instagram, or I'm sorry, Twitter, this video of Tucker uh, answering the question was taken at a Turning Point USA event. Uh, which, by the way, is an amazing organization. I've had a chance to speak at, I believe, two of their events. Just absolutely amazing. So Tucker Carlson was there as a speaker doing some Q&A with the audience when he was asked this question. But who asked him the question about would you accept the VP nomination? The young man, 12-year-old Jaden, who back a few months ago got in trouble in Colorado at his school for wearing the Gadsden pack. You know, don't tread on me. Wearing that on his backpack, he was kicked out of school, teachers saying, hey, that symbol originated in slavery. And then this freedom-loving 12-year-old boy and his mom schooled the teachers. Like, no, it didn't. It originated from the Revolutionary War, you moron. So the young man was allowed back in school with his patch as it should be. Come on. So he asked Tucker at the Turning Point USA event, would you accept the nomination to be President Trump's vice president running mate? He was wearing sunglasses while he asked it. To me, that kind of makes anybody look like a moron when they're inside wearing sunglasses, but this kid is not a moron. He only looks like it wearing sunglasses in a darkened room. That's weird. What was Tucker's answer? Let's find out. And also, would you consider being vice president for Trump? Ooh, the crowd approves. <laughs> it's, it's funny you ask. So, th thank you for asking me, Jaden. Um, and it's, it's funny that you paired those two questions together because they have the same answer. I don't know what the first question was, and it's irrelevant for our conversation, so please don't worry about it. You asked, would I ever consider doing kids programming, and would I consider entering politics? And there's a phrase in Western Maine that I, I just love. I don't know nothing about that stuff. That's the phrase. And I feel that way. I feel like there's this weird temptation for people when they like do something for, I mean, I've done the same job literally for 32 years. So, you know, and they, you get good at something if you do it enough, you know what I mean? That's why you want to go to the knee doctor who does it eight times a day. And if you, you know, get to middle age and you're like, oh, I've been, you know, relatively successful in my own stupid field. I'm good at this. I, I think I'd also be a great landscape painter or hip hop artist or movie producer. Side note, I, I really enjoy Tucker's humbleness and self-deprecation, and I'm sure he's exaggerating on purpose just because he doesn't mind taking the piss out of himself, but just, you know, like, hey, I've been relatively successful in my own stupid field. I like that. Like, he doesn't seem to display very much narcissism, something that is kind of refreshing. You got to shake yourself and say, no, actually, that's a very recognizable syndrome that afflicts mostly men, but also Nikki Haley, who may or may not be real which is called hubris, hubris. And hubris means the belief that you're God. Hubris is like herpes for the mind, the belief that you're God. And that you're somehow good at everything. And I don't believe in that at all. And I check that impulse in myself on a daily basis. I'm a talk show host, that's what I do. And I talk about the world and my dumb ideas and... Yeah, I love that self-deprecation. I talk about the world and my dumb ideas. And by the way, as you can see, his answer is pretty much no. But I, I think his further explanation is really worthwhile to see. So we're going to see it. Politicians and the hijinks that they're up to and I fulminate and scowl and stare blankly into the camera. Mm. And, you know, I enjoy doing that. I think I'm pretty good at it. How could I not be? It's all I've ever done. 
But one thing I have never done, and probably not very good at, is making children's programming. I have a lot of children. Didn't allow them to watch TV, so I have no idea what kids watch. By the way, that photographer on stage, she's probably like, hey, nobody's gonna see me. I'll just, I'll just blatantly interrupt this whole thing. <laughs> Lady, get a get a little bit of a long distance lens there and get the hell off the stage. Politics, well, I've followed it all my life, of course. With every passing year, I become more repulsed because it becomes ever more repulsive. And I don't just mean the system, just to be totally clear on this. I don't just mean the system of politics. I mean the actual people who participate in it because I know them personally. <laughs> And, I, and with some, with real exceptions. I mean, I have a couple friends in politics, amazingly. Um, but in general, I think they're probably the worst people in our society, which, and there's got to be a name for this, a country of great people run by the worst people. It also describes the U.S. military. Isn't that weird? Maybe in an ideal world, we do have our best, our brightest, the most altruistic, the most caring, kind, intelligent, capable people running like this big thing called our country. People who have a genuine desire to serve the people. I think there's a few exceptions for sure, but I think for the most part, Tucker's right. We have the worst people running our country. That doesn't necessarily mean they're less intelligent or unintelligent, but I think it means, I think oftentimes they're very intelligent, but it means they are using their intelligence in the worst way. Should be to serve the people, but obviously we see a lot of politicians using the people to serve themselves. The best people led by the worst? And I honestly, I don't think I could be around that. I mean, I think it's absolutely important, maybe like historically important for Trump not to be stopped by this totally immoral country changing political vendetta. You cannot use the Justice Department to knock the front runner out of the race on fake charges, period. And if you allow that, you're done. Okay, so there's that. And you also can't allow a political party to choose a senile guy to, quote, run your country when every single person knows he's not running the country because he's senile. And no one's allowed to say so. Because Who's he talking about? We have no idea. <laughs> so I do think that's super important. It's just impossible to imagine myself ever getting involved in something like that. And not because I'm afraid, because I'm not afraid at all. I don't really care what happens to me, and I mean that. I mean that. By the way, a lot of times people of faith have that outlook where it's kind of like the more your fear of death can be provoked, the more the tyrants can control you. Whether it's like, hey, like a climate crisis, like the oceans are going to boil and you're going to die. Or get this shot. It's very tested, proven, safe and effective. Is it? No? Okay. Well, get it anyway. So ultimately, the more you fear death, the more controllable you are. But an interesting thing happens when someone has faith, and not just as a mental concept, but they actually feel the faith, they believe in God, they believe they're being watched over, they believe they have a path, they believe in an afterlife, whatever that looks like, heaven, whatever that looks like. When people actually feel that faith, they're not going to be very controllable. But because... How would I be good at that? Do you know what I mean? I just, I don't think I would. And I also, I think, I mean, I just can't imagine myself at a fundraiser or something and somebody like, well, actually, Zelensky is a lot like Churchill. And I just couldn't sit through that. I don't care how much money you're giving me. Zelensky is not like Churchill. Okay? Zelensky has tried to get my country where my children live in a nuclear war. And anyone who tries to get my children in a nuclear war is my enemy. And so I couldn't sit through that meal without making Ken Griffin mad. Oh, Ken Griffin, I'm a billionaire. Oh, shut up. You know nothing. By the way, if you haven't heard Ken Griffin, that guy he's talking about, I had never heard of him before. But there's another clip I watched uh, actually just this morning. Ken Griffin apparently is a donor to Ron DeSantis' campaign. Ron DeSantis originally had the position, let's end the Ukraine war. 
but his donor, Ken Griffin, gave him a call and within one phone call, this donor, Ken Griffin, got DeSantis to change his position on the Ukraine war, saying, yeah, we should probably be in it. We, we, we got to stay there. Now, I don't know what Ken Griffin's motive is, why he wants the Ukraine war to perpetuate us to continue funding them. But what Tucker is basically doing here is insulting Ron DeSantis for, I don't know, being weak enough and manipulated enough by a donor, basically, you know, selling out for money. I got to please this donor, so I'll change my position, my whole position on the Ukraine conflict. That is, I mean, that's what he's insulting here. And by the way, in the other clip I watched where Tucker is saying that, Tucker does say, like, I, I like Ron DeSantis. I like how he governs. I know him as a person, but him letting a donor change his mind, and clearly DeSantis' mind isn't changed, but he sold out the space in his mind where the, the belief, ah, we should get out of Ukraine, stop funding them. He sold that space to the narrative of we should stay there. So that is what he's insulting, basically a behavior of someone who he otherwise admires. And I've watched it. I interviewed a presidential candidate at one point who like said, what do you think of Ukraine? Oh, well, I think, you know, Ukraine is a sad regional conflict. I don't think Russia should invade it. Fine. But it's not in our core national interest. Well, that's obviously true. And Ken Griffin calls the guy up and is like, you can't say that. And he's like, issues a statement the next day like, I can't say that. Actually, Ukraine is really important. Slensky's Churchill. Again, he's talking about DeSantis. I'm not naming names. He named the name in the other video. Say, I thought that was disgusting. And I like the guy who did it, by the way. That's disgusting. You should be ashamed. You're a grown man, and you're taking orders from some moron. Some guy doesn't know anything who may be good at, you know, investing. It doesn't mean you're a good person. And it definitely doesn't mean you're wise. Wealth is not a measure of wisdom, and wisdom is all that matters if you're running things. So I just can't imagine. Anyway, one last question. Thank you so much. Okay, so Tucker effectively said, no, I will not accept the vice president nomination. I wouldn't be good at it. That's not what I do. I'm a talk show host. So who does Tucker support for Trump's VP running mate? We'll get to that in a minute. But first, who he does not support. One, Nikki Haley. He rose her pretty good. We're, we're going to take a look at that quick clip before we see who Tucker does want to endorse for the VP nomination. But when I heard Tulsi Gabbard mention the phrase Nikki Haley and people booed, I was like, oh, yeah, we're in the right. But then it, it raised actually a philosophical question for me which is, should you put air quotes around Nikki Haley? Because otherwise you're just assuming this is a real person and not just a hologram put out there by Ken Griffin and the billionaire class to torment you. And I do think that's like an open question. Is Nikki Haley real? <laughs> and actually, now, I mean, I don't know. Like, look, do I look like a biologist or a theologian? I don't know. What is real? But I, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And Tucker also says some additional words about Nikki Haley as the potential VP nomination, which I think are worth taking a look at. And this is from Newsweek.com. So this is obviously a leftist slant, you know, spinning it. But nonetheless, it's still entertaining. Tucker Carlson sends warning to Donald Trump. No, he didn't. They're trying to create division within this headline. But anyway, so speaking of Nikki Haley as a potential running mate for President Trump, describes that ticket as poison. And he's not talking about President Trump. He He's now very openly endorsing President Trump. He is suggesting Nikki Haley is poison. And he thinks so unhighly of Nikki Haley, just to put it uh, gently. He goes on to even say Nikki Haley is suggested as a potential VP pick for the former president. Carlson said not only would he not vote for a Trump-Haley ticket, but would advocate against it as strongly as I could. That's just poison, Carlson added. Here's somebody who's actively opposed to the interests of the country I grew up in, who endorsed the Black Lives Matter riots, and who is not left but is neoliberal in the darkest, most nihilistic way and has no real popular support and is a creature of the oligarchs. And lastly, he says about the... Haley Trump ticket. 
That would be so crazy. Anything could happen, of course, but picking Nikki Haley, who's utterly treacherous and utterly dismissive of the interest of Americans. Oh, I like his words for her. Nikki Haley, not a very popular lady, but it seems like the media, the leftist media, likes Nikki Haley as the Republican nomination for VP. They probably want her as the president because I, I don't think she's an honest Republican by any stretch. Not a very popular lady she is. So, who would Tucker Carlson support for the Trump VP nomination? Let's take a look. I mean, I, but the case, I, I kind of like Vivek. I think he's one of those people who, everyone beats up on Vivek for being, he's a phony and all this stuff. I don't know. I, I've covered a lot of campaigns going back to 1992, and I've noticed this thing in many candidates, and I notice it in him. The process, the process of running for president and speaking three times a day and having people throw hostile questions in your face causes you to change. They all change during these campaigns, like for real, inside. And I feel like Vivek's positions have gotten much more sincere mm -hmm. since the beginning of this. Like he, I watch him with Nikki Haley and I'm like, this is a guy who's very offended by her views, like for real. He's not attacking her because she's a woman, he's attacking her because he actually thinks her views are terrible for the country he lives in. And I love that. Mm -hmm. There you have it, some perspective from Tucker Carlson on the VP nomination as well as him directly addressing the question, would he accept the VP nomination, uh, which is no. And personally, I'm glad to hear that. Selfishly would want Tucker Carlson to be Trump's VP running mate. I think he is a very common sense person. I think he's well informed, though he's, you know, from his mouth, he says, hey, I don't have experience in politics. I'm not good at it. Well, politicians are definitely not good at politics. And we saw President Trump perform pretty darn solidly as a president and he's not a politician so selfishly because I know Tucker Carlson's heart is in the right spot I know he's not a, a born and bred career politician like Joe Biden 50 years in the Senate and now that you can't even uh, use your brain anymore now you're the president yeah that that obviously doesn't work so selfishly I would love to have Tucker Carlson at some level of high office because I think he would serve the country well. However, caring about Tucker Carlson, I'm glad that he's saying no. Uh, I don't think running for office, vice president, I don't think that would be enjoyable for him. I think there's so much sacrifice where your life is just changed forever and not in a good way unless status, significance, control is like how you gratify yourself throughout your whole life. So uh, yeah, caring about Tucker Carlson as a human being, I'm glad he said no. With that said, my beautiful freedom loving friend, thank you for watching this video. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Tucker Carlson is a national treasure. Mark my words on that. Here's a special message. Do you love to outsource your health to the medical industrial complex? Or are you someone who wants to take control of your health? If you're the latter, listen up. Last year, nearly 275 million antibiotic prescriptions were handed out in the US. And chances are in the next 12 months, you or someone you love is gonna need one. But with supply chain shortages becoming a common reality, more and more families are being forced to take their health into their own hands. That's where this beauty comes in. The Wellness Company's Emergency Medical Kit contains eight life-saving medications that every American should have in their medicine cabinet. If you have Tylenol in there, you should have this. With antibiotics, antiparasitics, and antivirals, it's like having a pharmacy in your own home, which puts you in control of your health. It contains emergency meds that you need, like amoxicillin, ivermectin, and z -Pak. It also contains a 22-page guidebook with instructions for safe use of each medication, from benign tick bites to pneumonia, everything is covered. These prescription kits are in high demand, so make sure you order yours now before cold and flu season really ramps up. So go to twc.health slash jpreacts to order your medical emergency kit now. And while you're there, use the discount code jpreacts for 15% off your first order. The medical emergency kit is available only in the USA. It pays to be an American. One more time, that is twc.health slash jpreacts. Enjoy.